Hello guys. We had a TV chef here. I don't know if it's still on the TV or not. Called Nick Nan, okay. And I've just put this in as a bookmark, okay. And this is from a recipe book from BBC Books. And it says quick and easy dishes for every occasion. And this is a book full of chicken recipes, okay. Now today. I'm going to cook something called pasta with char grilled chicken, courgettes, and parmesan cream. Now, I've brought some of the ingredients up to show you, not all. I, you will see all of them as I cook it, but some of the main ones are courgette. I'm going to, they did give a, a precise weight, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to have half a courgette today half tomorrow. Also there's some tagliatelle. This is tagliatelle. It's perfect for a date. And it's like this ball. It's almost like a ball of wool almost, but with pasta instead, okay? I'm going to put several of those in, okay? And so this is the proper stuff. I could have used other things, but I thought I'd get the proper stuff. I was actually quite miffed, actually, because I went to um, Tesco and I didn't have any, so I had to go to Marks uh, and Spencer because I just wanted to do a proper video for people. And this cost one pound more. And then the next day, I actually went into Tesco's again the next day just because I couldn't carry enough back. And the next day, they actually got some in Tesco, but it was a pound cheaper, but obviously their own brand. But this is Marks and Spencer's own brand, okay? Marks and Spencer's is a more upmarket shop. But to be honest, it was just nearby, and it was the only shop nearby I could think of to go into, because um, I can't drive, um, to get anything like this, okay? So it costs one pound more for a bag, but never mind. Um, and it says egg tagliatelle pasta, okay? But this is the dry stuff, it's not the um, fresh stuff that will go off in a week. Now, as well as that, I've got some apps of date um, well sort of um out of date chicken and i have to be careful this says um is british chicken breast fillets room to roam and normally this would have cost three pounds just for two i got it for reduced for 75p for two because it was about to expire that day i put this in the freezer the day i got it um, the date was the 16th of December and this is just over three months later so this has been in the freezer for over three months and I think normally it's supposed to put them in the freezer for a month but it doesn't say in the back so I've, this has been in the freezer for three months okay now recently there's a story in the news about um, the drummer from the Foo, the Foo Fighters dying I couldn't possibly have known that um, in December or January and also there was a visit um, featuring um, William and Kate and they had to change the venue at almost the last minute because of some potential protests or um, some concerns in a region about you know some ownership of land or something like that I don't understand the full story and also Vladimir Putin has, according to the West, invaded Ukraine, right? I couldn't have known those things about two or three months ago, so that proves it really is um, in March, okay? Now, near the end of March, now, um, it says, for the chicken, it says, um, fed on a corn rich diet in bright and spacious barns for chickens to roam okay and it's also got um uh, it's got a red tractor symbol and that says red tractor enhanced welfare and it's also got rspca assured and the rspca stands for the royal society for the protection against the cruelty of animals well i believe that's what it is um 
and it's, that's their certification mark so what they're saying is is that the chickens have been looked after okay and they haven't just been in a cage they've been looked after inside okay now um it says on the back fresh class a chicken breasts fillets skinless okay so as i said this is a courgette this is going to be chopped diagonally i'm going to have half of this i've shown you the chicken i've shown you the tag hotel and all i need to do now is show you the frying pans now the thing is you're meant to use i'm not going to show you the saucepan because it's obvious you'll see it later now this is something called a griddle pan okay and um, it's going to be cooked on here because apparently it will create lines on the chicken i'm not too bothered about it to be honest it doesn't bother me in the slightest but it was recommended so i'm going to do it okay now normally i use this as a grill so i usually put food on it and then put this underneath the grill because we did have an actual real grill that came with the cooker um it's got lost i don't know how it had nothing to do with me i wasn't even in the house when all this happened but apparently it broke down and it got lost over time and nobody knows i don't know where it's gone you know it's been over the whole house so um you know but anyway it broke down it didn't work properly so we over time i got something like, like this i'm only originally used a grill in the latter part of the years to warm plates i um put food on here and then stick it under the grill so i treat this as something to grill food in okay i'm sure a lot of people here will cringe but honestly that's what we do now one of the things it tells you to do after that is to put wine in it and things like this now as this is for something i use to cook for my mum yes really right i don't want to put any wine in it because it might affect the flavor of food she has and she probably doesn't want it so what i'm going to do is and chicken's just chickens it's not like strange so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the juices out of here after I've done it and put it into this frying pan because this is my own frying pan and I only really use this for my own stuff okay right so I don't use this for my mum's food so um so because virtually everything my mum has is grilled in, in this basically or it goes in the oven um so I'll be used I'll be pouring it from here into this frying pan and I'll also be mixing some things in the beginning in this frying pan as well, so it doesn't you don't lose some of the oil, okay? Because it's going to be used anyway, and that will be used for the sauce, okay? So that's what I'm going to do, okay? And now um, you'll see me now actually um, on the landing, um, on a board doing things, okay? Now and preparing things so that and then after I've prepared it all i will eat it all okay so thanks for watching bye for now but don't go away because now you're going to see me prepare it and then cook it as i said there are much more ingredients in this but these were the basic ones there's also things like cream and you know and some wine which i'm going to guess and some um grated parmesan maybe use a slightly different label but it is parmesan i think so there you go thanks for watching bye but do not stop do not stop because i shouldn't say thanks for watching because i want you to carry on watching okay but thanks for now i'm now going to start and prepare things and you will see me do it okay carry on watching right so now i'm going to do so I'm going to get out the courgette. I've already washed it. And this is on the chopping board. And I'm meant to chop the courgette diagonally, so... I do say quite thick, but I'm not going to. Um, because I'm going to be using half a courgette, okay? that should be enough okay so I've got enough left for tomorrow okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that just like that for now and just check that it will I have gone all the way through yes that's the courgette okay right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, this is not really what you're supposed to do, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this because I'm... Because...
the juices will be fried in here later anyway so it doesn't matter so any excess um, rather than being wasted any excess olive oil will be used so I have here some olive oil I don't have much left so I'm going to just guess it to be honest yeah I have some olive oil in the pan and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut open the wrapping wrapping now I'm gonna take out one chicken breast and here I have one chicken breast I'm gonna put it in the, the front this particular frying pan this is not the one I'm gonna fry the chicken in but it I'm gonna use to mix it and I'm turning this around so that you can see I'm using this to soak it in and now um, that's, for some reason, the um, person is obsessed with sea salt. They tell you to use sea salt later, but they do say season it. Says it means salt and pepper, but this particular um, chef, Nick Nam, Nick Nan, sorry, happens to like sea salt a lot, so they've mentioned sea salt in the recipe, so I'm going to take out the bag here. It's inside this box, it's an old box, I don't use it very often, see so that's why it looks old and manky. But there's a bag inside which protects it all. And inside it has this sea salt. If I take something out, you'll notice they look like they're flakes. So they're not, it's not like powder, it's like flaky sort of stuff. And I'm going to shake that on. If this isn't what you wanted, then I'm sorry, but there you go, that's what I'm doing. As well as that, I have some black pepper now. I know this looks really old and manky. And this is because it was empty before I emptied it. I did get some new black pepper, but I did not like the um, container. On the one I got with black pepper, so I took it out of there and put it in here. And because this has got lots of nice holes and the other one hasn't, so I can do this. And I can shake black pepper all over it. I'm now going to turn it upside down and shake some more black pepper all over it. Again, put some sea salt on this side as well. I don't know if it's too much, I'm not a professional chef, as some people complain about, so there you go, I'm just somebody who tries, I'm just an ordinary person, and I'm going to turn it over again, and also if any of the um, sea salt gets lost in here, it doesn't matter because the sea salt will be used, sea salt will also be used later anyway. As a separate in a separately for the um, juicy sauce, okay. So now that is now I think ready to be fried in the griddle pan. But I'm going to do that in a moment. So now I have the griddle pan here, and I'm just going to turn that over there into there. So now. Now, I've been told that you've got to put this specially so that you do it so that you have it one way 
and we'll do it for three or four minutes then turn it around then turn it upside down and then turn it around again so the idea is to get lines all over it i'm not really obsessed with lines to be totally honest in it i'm not particularly bothered about presentation and things like that i just like i just want to eat food i'm not particularly bothered about does it look pretty or stuff like that but you know um some people care about this sort of thing so okay right so now that's the chicken um, prepared, ready to be cooked. And now, move that aside. And now it's still got some olive oil in here, so there's still some olive oil in here. So now, I'll leave that at an end, so I'll leave that. I'll just put these in. And you, it does say you've got to soak um, the courgettes in olive oil. So this is some leftover olive oil from whatever the chickens left took. Um, I'm sure people will cringe at what I've just done, but there you go. Um, So that's the um, courgettes ready for when I um, grill the courgettes. So they're soaked in olive oil as well. Okay. Um, apart from getting the rest of the ingredients, I believe that's... Um, The, prep the main preparation done. Um, so all I need to do now is get the rest of the ingredients and um, bring them up ready to be used in cooking and then bring the um, hot plate up and things like that, okay? Okay, so now I've got the um, tagliatelle, which I showed you earlier. Tagliatelle, and it's M&S brand, which is Marks and Spencer. And I'm going to take out of here some of the balls. Hopefully that should be enough. And later I will put boiling water in later. But I'll worry about that later, okay? Now, while I'm here, I will show you some of the other ingredients that are going to go in later. Um, I have some wine. It's just cheap wine, to be honest. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, I think it's about four or five pound, I can't remember, it's about, it is actually from New Zealand, so, you probably can't see it because of the lighting, but it says New Zealand on it, it's not like one thousand pound a bottle or anything, it's, Quite cheap, and I got it because I could make lots of things. I don't drink wine, I just um, use it as a cooking ingredient, to be honest. Also, I got some um, cheap double cream. This wasn't the original thing that came on it. I put this on myself. This came with some cream I had in the past, and they stopped using them, so I kept one, and I used that to put on top. Um, this is dated the 2nd of April. So, I'm just going to open this up ready. And there you can see the cream in the side. I'm going to put that aside. Um, also, I have some parsley. It's got some parsley in there. And I just lift that up. I can actually take the top off as well, but 
put it inside, but then I put it in like that and just shake it. And I will shake that in when I do. I also have some basil. Um, again, same kind of thing. You can see the basil there. What's that? I also have some lemon juice. This is actually Jif lemon juice. It's um, not a real lemon. It's a, it's plastic. What you're looking at. And then you lift the top up and you then squirt it out the hole. So that's Jif lemon juice. And um, I'm sure, there's anything else I've missed? It does tend to use um, grated rind of an, a lemon. I'm not going to use that, so I'm just going to ignore it. Um, oh yes, there's also parmesan cheese, which I haven't brought up yet. So, I'm also going to um, open up and show you the parmesan cheese, okay? I forgot to bring that up. So, I'm going to get the parmesan cheese now. And then you can see that I'm going to cut it open so you can see that it's grated parmesan cheese, okay? Right. And I'm going to put the courgettes that I've chopped onto a plate separately. Oh dear. Not what I wanted. I'm not so fussy about... Um, I'll worry about that separately. Okay, it's not what I wanted to do, but never mind. Okay. I've still got that one, so I'll have to throw it away. Shame, but never mind. Um, right, okay. So that's now the courgettes on a plate ready. Um, okay, right. I have here something called... Um, Parmigiano Reggiano. I can't pronounce it. It's a fancy name for Parmesan cheese, to my knowledge, okay? And right at the top, it's got a scissor mark. And it says, um, cut, open, and seal. It says, cut, open, and seal. So I've got a pair of scissors here. A pair of scissors. And I'm cutting along the top where it tells me to. And then if I look, do this here, look. And suddenly you'll notice it's got this special thing where you can open it and then you can push it together and it will stay open. So if I just shake it lightly, it's not coming out. That's sealed, okay? So there you go. That's the um, preparation for the um, Parmesan cheese, which is going to be used later. I've also brought up the cooker, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready with the um, tagliatelle. I'm probably going to cook it longer than I should, to be totally honest, but especially given what I'm trying to do. And um, never mind. Um, and. Um, Right, so I'm going to put some boiling water in here, and then I'm going to, um, what's in there? And then I'm going to take the boiling water downstairs and put it on another hot plate um, while I cook everything else, okay? Right guys, I'm going to get the kettle now. Right, I have a kettle with some boiling hot water in here. I have here um, a hot plate with a saucepan on it. I've moved the saucepan forward slightly so that I can film it better, but it's not quite on the hot plate properly. I'm now going to pour in the boiling water. Now I've got this, I'm going to stir it around. I 
I hadn't actually switched it on. So I'm going to switch the hot plate on now. You can see it's lit up. I'm going to make sure it starts to boil slightly and then I'm going to take it downstairs. This is quite slow, but I'm doing this in real time. So, I'm gonna put a lid on as well, but you know, I'm doing so I can easily stir it. I'm going to quickly get um, my watch because I need a stopwatch. While well, it's heating, which seems to be going to be taking forever, I've got my watch, and I'm going to be using that to time um, something in a moment, okay? Well, it's starting to get warm, I mean, it's not bubbling, or, but it can see steam coming up, so what I'm going to do now when it gets to, I'm going to move this briefly out of the way. In a moment, I'm going to quickly switch the swap the saucepan for the griddle pan. And I'm going to time it for three minutes. Now, I've never done this because I normally just cook until I think it's done. So I'm not going to quickly swap it. And now the griddle pan has gone on. Right. Okay. I'm not going to leave it for about... Four. I've been told to, I've got to leave it alone and not touch it at all for four minutes. So, okay, I'm going to do that while I take the sauce from downstairs and... Um, Put this on another hot plate downstairs, okay? See you soon. Right, okay, right. I've been told now that that's about four minutes later, so now I've got to lift this off. And I'm just going to turn up to a dand I wouldn't normally. And now you can see the griddle mark. I'm going to do it upside down. But I will also be turning it round as well later, so I'll be turning over and then round and turning over and then round again. I don't know if griddle marks is the right word, but it's what I say. It's the marks caused by the griddle pan, the lines caused by the griddle pan, okay? 
I said, I'm not really a, much of a fan of the lines. I prefer it without lines, but I'm doing it as it's supposed to be, okay? He actually told me to turn it round rather than doing what I'm doing, but I did it so that I could easily show you that it's actually put the lines on. So now I'm going to let it carry on for a while and then I'll turn it upside down and then round again so you can see. There for now to put the pressure on it for now. Okay, I'll do it in a minute. I'm just watching it doing it is boring, you see, because you don't see it as it cooks underneath, so. Now, while it's doing that, that should be it now, so I'm going to now turn this over. Now you can see the lines on the other side. And now I'm going to turn it round. So it was like that before, roughly. Now I'm going to turn it all the way round this way. So now it'll have a crisscross pattern on it. Now I'm going to slightly deviate for time reasons. I'm going to slightly deviate away from what he's saying okay um, because he tells you to cook it and then leave it for five minutes on a warm plate I don't want to do that so I'm going to cook these at the same time now so but normally you would do this because um, you don't have enough, enough space in the pan um, to do what I'm going to do I'm going to put some of these courgettes in now normally he tells you to cook all the chicken first but to be fair when he told you to cook the chicken first um, that was for people who were trying to cook like four a meal for four all at the same time so there you go you can now see the courgette okay and I'm gonna put this on top Probably not a good idea actually, but that was the oil, some of the oil coming out from the courgette. Not a good idea, but I've done this as a way of heating a plate up because it's, it says you're supposed to want a warm plate. This is one way of warming a plate. I, we do actually have a professional proper plate warmer, not a really expensive thing, but a small cheap thing for about 20 quid that you plug into the mains and you put it into sleeves. But now. Again, I'm meant to leave this for about three or four minutes and then also turn the courgettes over, okay? And it's also a way of warming a plate, even though I shouldn't have to do this, okay? Be very careful when you do this because if you leave it alone, the plate will break. Um, and so you've got to constantly touch it to see if it's not getting too hot. Um, I'm just going to do this a minute. Careful. Yeah, it's not too warm. So, but I've often used the trick of putting this either on top of um, a small portable oven or I put it onto the um, top of a saucepan. Be careful because I'll burn my fingers, and my fingers are more important than a plate, to be honest. So, um, That should, in theory, be enough. I'm going to leave it another couple of minutes and then I'll turn it over. And so you should have a crisscross pattern, hopefully, on it. Um, yep, this plate's starting to get a bit warmer, so... Right, so... I'm going to do... And so now I'm going to turn over the courgettes. I'm 
this is a slight deviation from the way he's tending to do it. And now look, I'll take this off. And I've just turned this over so it's also doing it the same way. Now you'll notice there's a crisscross pattern on it. So now it looks like there's a sort of crisscross pattern on it. Uh, okay. And so I'm not really a fan of this kind of stuff. I don't it's not enough of a crisscross pattern for me to even care about, to be honest, but um You know, I'm just cook food to eat it, not so it's got a nice crisscross pattern on it, but there you go, you can just about see look a square there, but we'll give you look carefully enough. So now I'm gonna plate back on again. Keep the plate warm. And in a minute I'm going to get ready for everything else. So, um, then, um, I'm going to get ready for all the other things. So, um, Right, looks. I'm sorry that you're bored looking at a silly little um, plate. It looks a bit stupid, I know, but there you go. So it's meant to be put on a warmed plate. So hopefully this is long enough to have done the underneath. I'm probably going to regret this, but yep, it's done the underneath as well. So now it's got this sort of Crisscross pattern. You notice the sort of upwards marks there. It's got a sort of crisscross pattern. As I said, I'm not really a massive fan of all this crisscrossing stuff, but there you go. Now, let's put it all on a plate. So this is not sweet yet. This is just um, what I told you to do. So I'm going to put it onto there. And, uh, Now I'm going to do in a minute some, right now this, just a minute, wait a minute, um. right so now I've got that so I'm going to just put that way somewhere, now this is where I'm going to get a bit cleverer now. You're supposed to put wine into this at this point, but I'm not going to because, as I said, I use this pan genuinely to cook for my mum and I don't want to complain about anything. So, um, this is a frying pan. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour, and this one's slightly different, I'm going to pour all the juices straight into the frying pan. So, I'm going to get all the, all the oil, olive oil and stuff straight from there into there. There's not much of it, but there you go. That's going to have to do. Now, I'm going to leave that just a bit for now, just to soak in. I said there was some olive oil from before, and I'm just going to take this downstairs because always it's a nuisance. Then I'm going to start putting everything in here, okay? There's still some of that liquid in there, 
So now I'm going to do is so I'm going to put the um, wine in now. To be absolutely honest with you, you're supposed to put a specific amount in, but I'm going to guess it because I haven't got a lot of wine left. I don't want to waste too much. So I'm just going to guess it. That should be enough. And now I've got some cream. I'm going to pour some of that in. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do at all. I did not want to do that. I thought I've washed it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And there's some cream. Um, Right, it says to um, wait until it's got a bit more creamy. I'm supposed to also add some lemon rind in, but I don't have any. And as I've got some lemon juice anyway, that's good enough for me. I meant to wait until it gets a bit thicker, until it thickens up a bit. In the meantime, I can pop this aside. I just wait until it thickens a bit, so... I think it's starting to thicken a bit, perhaps it should thicken a lot more, but it, it's starting to do, so it's starting to get a bit thicker. So, I'm like, I'm trying to, I know I shouldn't rush things, but, you know, I am genuinely mindful of time. And so now, I'm going to put some of the pepper in, so, again, put some black pepper in here. Put in some more sea salt. Here's the sea salt I got earlier. Put some more sea salt in. And I stir that. And also I've got to add some basil and parsley and also some lemon juice so I'm going to put in the lemon juice now so actually I'll put that in a minute because um, while I'm doing that it might be thickening so here we're going to put in the parsley now look I've put quite a bit of parsley in I'm going to put some basil in the moment. Here we have some basil now. I know the lighting here is going to be terrible, but you know, it's just for some stupid reason it keeps darkening itself even if I don't want it to. Um, and it's too much of a pain in the neck. I wish. Honestly, it does say basil. You'll have to take my word for it. And if that's got B, it's got basil. Take my word for it now. If I... So now I've got some basil in there as well. Mix that in. I'm starting to get much thicker now. And now... It's going to be thinned in a moment with some hot water, boiling hot water, which you're supposed to put in. Um, so I'm now going to I'm now going to put in the lemon juice. So I'm now going to open the lemon juice. So yeah, 
lifted the lid up on the lemon juice so I can now squirt in some lemon juice and that pretty much is that pretty much from what I can tell um, Oh yes, there's the parmesan as well. So now I've got the parmesan. So I'm gonna I cut it open earlier so it'll be easy to do this, so in theory anyway, so yep, so now I have this look and I just go and now I've opened up the parmesan and I can just go like this. I'm probably going to be putting more palms than I need to, but, you know, I had to buy a big bag, it was all they had. Um, they used to do smaller ones, but I think they finally worked out a way of ripping people off. That's probably not the right way of putting it, by making them buy larger bags, even if they don't need one. I preferred a smaller bag, but they changed it so a smaller bag isn't palms and it's something else. So, I'm trying to do the real thing for you guys, you can see me cooking using the real stuff. Um, I don't know if it tells you how much parmesan you're supposed to use. Um, Fifty grams. Yes. Yeah. So, it's, so it's basically um, so it's basically a quarter of one of these bags. Basically, so it's quite a lot. So I might put in even more because it's. And this is grated, okay, so it's professionally grated. I'm, I didn't grate this, it was professionally grated, okay? You can do it cheap and do it yourself, but I just wanted to show you how the professionals do it, because I could never probably ground it quite that, grate it quite that, um, okay? So now it's doing that. Now I'm meant to pour some of the um, hot water in from... the um, tagliatelle into here believe it or not and I've never done that before I don't know why I've never come across recipes where you do that kind of thing normally you just throw away the water from pasta normally to be absolutely honest with you but it's what I but it's what the recipe says so I'm gonna do it even though normally I've never do anything like that truthfully um, Right now, I've gone downstairs and I've got the saucepan and I'm now going to pour in some of the um, hot water from the saucepan. And so I've never done this before. Uh, <coughs> I have put my own water in, but never quite like that. I might have actually done it without intending to, but I normally just put um, extra water in. I'm not doing it straight from a pan like that, so there you go. Maybe too much. I've no idea, but that's what you said. What they said is so about two, about a tablespoon or something. It's probably a bit more than that, but it's just difficult to exactly off the top of your head how much to put in when you're trying to just pour it in. So there you go. Now it's turned down. So in a moment, it, I think you just have to serve it in a moment. have the um the tag of your tail but i need to drain it so i've used a sieve normally i'll put it straight down the um use a bit different i'll be, use, put it straight down the sink well but i'm instead 
because I'm upstairs, I'm going to do it so it goes into another saucepan, okay? So. So it's got a bit sticky. I'll worry about that later. So there you go, I now have the, um, you can see for some strange reason, this has never happened to me before, I was shaking the sieve and the handle literally snapped off. Absolutely terrible. That's what you probably get. I'm not sure. I think I've got that cheapy from the market. I can't remember, but I was just shaking it like that and suddenly the handle snapped off. Amazing, but there you go. So now, I'm going to uh, move this back forward again. And I'm now going to pour the tag the tail into the pan. And mix it with all of this. I may have cooked too much tackle top to be honest, but I couldn't remember from memory how much to have. I mean, I didn't want to have too little, so. I'm gonna, while that's doing that, I'm going to um, get ready to prepare a few things. So I'm now going to take the saucepans downstairs. Moment, I'm going to move that out of the way a moment. I'll move this here. I'll move the plate here. And now. The chicken start can go cold actually, but um, I did it exactly their way. I would have personally kept it warmer, but never mind. Um, so now, I'm going to move it up a bit. I'm not cutting the chicken. Move the cold jets out of the way a moment. So this is, I think they're meant to put it on a plate warmer, but it doesn't matter. Um, this is all, all this is going to go on in a moment. And I have had cold chicken, um, just so you can see, this is the inside of the chicken. Breast, that's the chicken breasts. apparently how you meant to do it something like that and now I'm going to move these to the side a moment and now I'm going to pour the tagliatelle in with in a moment all the juices so it's a knife and fork been all the juices to put the pieces of chicken on top. I admit this is not particularly well presented, but um, you know, it's, it's difficult to do things when you're filming, so. Okay. I don't see if any other courgettes or anything below, so. I'm trying to get any piece of chicken I can find. So I can deal with the presentation. So. I'm just checking for any pieces of chicken below so that all the pieces of chicken on top and the tacciatelle is meant to warm the um, chicken and courgettes. I think that's it. So now we have the pieces of chicken, the courgettes, and the tacciatelle. Okay. 
And now finally, last thing to do before eating it, is once again open up the grated parmesan cheese. And this time, sprinkle it over the top. It's not much coming out, so I'll, I just don't want it to come flooding out like that. That wasn't really very good. But I did this out so you could see if some was actually coming out. A lot was there, so... And there you go. And now you can see it. Move it closer. I'm pretty sure there's nothing else to do, but I will double check. Um, Yeah, so that's it. That's it cooked. So now, I'm going to eat it, okay? Right. Okay. This should be interesting if I can actually um, eat like this, but I'm going to try my best to match on the stairs. So if I lean badly, I'm going to actually fall over and go down the stairs and probably die, but never mind. <laughs> I'm sort of risking my life for you guys to do this, but never mind. I'm now putting another foot on a different stair, so I'll be okay. Now, not the calls yet. It's a bit cold, to be honest. Um, perhaps next time I should um, put it under the grill, the whole plate under the grill to keep it all warm. Now this is the tagliatelle, it's like spaghetti in some ways, it's well, so you can put it on a fork and then twist it round. And I have some of the tagliatelle and some of the, um, it doesn't want to cooperate so I'm going to have to push this. And have a lot and then twist the fork round, which is going to be difficult. Um, I think you can really eat one thing. I think it's going to be difficult to do some chicken and some. And that's the best I can do. And yes, the cool sets make it very juicy. I've had I'm helping fighting for four. Um, in the past, I've been with a sausage recipe. Well, and it uses parsley rather than only. Uh, it doesn't use basil as well, but never mind, it's quite interesting. A bit like a chicken salad, which sometimes people have with croutons, but well, obviously this is meant to be warm. Um, I'm 
I don't really know what to say to be honest. Um, apart from I've cooked far too much of it, and it, this could probably have lasted me about three or four days, but I didn't realise at the time. So, you know, I've not done this exact recipe before, so. As you can see, look, that's a piece of chicken. Um, also, because of the way I've cut it, you know, I've cut it like they said, you don't really see much of the lime plug to be honest, so wasting your time, in my opinion. Just to get the fancy lime shape, because when you look at the side, where you see barely anything. So, was it me normally? I'd have just done a normal frying pan and not worried about these grill lines. I don't see the attraction, to be honest. I've never had, truthfully. It just looks like it's got extra burn marks on it. That's, to be honest, and that, you know, I don't understand why people like these burn marks on food deliberately. I can understand things having to be cooked like sausages, otherwise, you know, you could be very ill. But, um... I don't understand people wanting it to look like that, you know, where it's got like lines of black on it, but I think to give it the barbecue look. Some wine connoisseurs might think, what a waste of wine when you could drink it. Um, I don't think I've ever tried expensive wine. I've definitely never bought it. And, um, you know, um, and, you know, I truthfully, um, don't think wine tastes that nice, to be honest. It's good for recipes. I use it for recipes. You know, it makes it. I think it makes some recipes better, but I don't know how some women can like buy cheap bottles of wine and drink it all night and get for about three or four bottles in one night. I mean, I could barely cope with, you know, perhaps a glass before I just decide it's just too not enough. It's just more than I can take, to be honest. Um, not because of the alcohol, but because I just don't think it tastes that brilliant, in my opinion. Sorry. But, but it's, good. it's quite good for um, recipes, so... And that's after some more that's left. I've eaten all the courgettes now, I think. Yep, I've eaten all the courgettes that's just left with the chicken. And... The rest of the chagri shell. Maybe in the end I might have actually been better off by getting this chagri because it may taste a bit nice. So I'm not an expert on these things. I know there's different ways of making it. People talk about bronze um, um, cut um, pasta, which has been specially cut in a specially way with special equipment or something it's meant to taste better how i wouldn't know but experts have said they've analyzed it and supposedly you know pasta cooks in these special bronze cookers or some cutters i mean sorry it's meant to somehow taste better than those that haven't been i don't understand it it's beyond me and If I hadn't heard you, I would think they're being absolutely ridiculous, but, you know, there you go, what do I know? So, and that's a very simple, this is a very simple meal that anybody could do. Well, maybe not, you know, if you can't see very well or you can't move or something, like, you know, but... You get my point. So, I 
and people who watch my cooking videos know I always show people how it's all done um, warts and all practically nothing much went wrong this time the only difference was this time um, some cream went on to the top and side of the spatula which wasn't my intention while I was pouring out the cream but I'd washed up the spatula anyway so it didn't matter um, Now, what's actually interesting about Nick Narn was that he claimed in his book that he was completely self-taught, he didn't go to a professional cookery school, I believe. I believe I read something like that, so if I'm wrong, I apologise. Um, he said apparently self-taught and he did become a chef on TV. I don't know. I can't remember if he's got his own, had his own restaurant or something like that. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but... He was some sort of enthusiast who just tried it all himself and managed to do it, so. He wrote two main recipe books that I got. Um, one was all about chicken and how to cook food for chicken, like the recipe I've just done now. And the other one was for salmon. And I've got both recipe books, okay? He may have done other recipe books, I don't know, but those the two I saw by him, um, which were published by BBC Books, okay? And as I said, he was a, um, a chef that appeared on some of our TV programmes um, on the BBC. I have nearly finished it all, so I can't believe I've just spent 13 minutes eating a chicken pasta meal, <laughs> essentially. Um,
Right, that's practically it all. Ain't now, so. There you go. I don't like to waste food, so I usually use my fingers to scoop it up. I know it's completely uncouth, unprofessional. In a proper restaurant, you're supposed to just um, leave it, but I don't like leaving it. I like to. Also, makes it easier for me to wash it, the plate afterwards. Truthfully, so. Right, that's practically it now. So, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.